Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have got a very special video. In today's video, I am super excited because we are checking out the all new Infinity Newbie Drone AIO or all in one and it's not brand new it didn't just come out yesterday but it is new to the market and the whole idea uh, in itself is new if you have not heard of it you've got a decision to make because this thing is super pricey but is super packed and super awesome and we got to check it out and we are going to find out let's go Alright pilots, so this here is the all-in-one infinity board and it is absolutely cool looking. I've never seen nothing like it. The whole idea is not that new. It's not the first board to do this, but when we talk about all-in-ones, you know, you might have an ESE and a PDB together. Or maybe you've got a flight controller and a PDB together. Hey, whatever you're cup of tea is, that's your all-in-one, right? Not like this. This is a true all-in-one. That means everything that you need, PDB, ESC, and flight controller is all on one board. So we're going to go ahead and crack this open and find out what's going on because this is something hot. So we're going to go ahead and crack this puppy open. Boom making this jump together. Look e here. Now, before I crack it open, let's go ahead and take a look at the back because I do want to show you here Infinity All-in-One ESC Plus Flight Controller. I'm not sure if you can read that, but the MCU is an STM 32 F22, and that doesn't exist. That's not what this is. There's a typo. They missed the 7. This is an F7 microcontroller unit. That is what MCU is. We've got a gyro, an MPU, 6,000, continuous current, 45 amp, burst current, 55 amp, 3 to 6 S LiPo. Hey, pretty impressive. And a BL Heli 32 ESC, all on one board. Whoop. Must I say more? So on top, I'm seeing a heat sink, so that means that that's probably our ESC. And on the bottom will be our open flight control. Whoo. Wait a minute. This thing is completely closed. What? Okay, so we've got an aluminum ESC, aluminum flight controller, all on one board on a super thick PCB. So that means they've built this to handle the power, to be able to get nice and hot, be able to cool itself down, and be able to handle loads of power. Man, this is impressive. Look at that. And it's absolutely gorgeous. And I feel like most recently in a video, we discussed this, that FPV is the only hobby to take bare electronics, strap them to a quadcopter, and send them to the sky. So the fact that they've actually closed up the electronics on this one, I'm going to say well done. Let's see what it all comes with just in case you're about to get one. And I would imagine before you spend 130 that's right, $130. You would want to know what this looks like, what does it work like, how do I wire it, and what comes in the box. Let's see what we got. So we've got our packaging, we've got our case, uh, screws, grommets, uh, XT60 wiring cables, and a uh, regular old 470 35 volt low ESR capacitor. All right, so let's go over some of the specs. I mean, we went over some, but let's cover the rest. I can see here that it's a micro USB, not a micro USB-C. We've got the MPU that we talked about. I did notice around the edge, look at that, and I'm going to imagine this is the flight controller side. This is probably your ESC side, not that it really matters, uh, because the pads that you do have to solder up your motors are on both sides. Your XT60 is on both sides. Uh, you do have your two holes for your capacitor if you wanted to go ahead and drop that in, which I think it's pretty customary on all flight controllers now. You take that, you take that, and slide that in, boomity boom, and then you fold it down. Very nice, very nice. I'm looking forward to building this. I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of power it can handle. Uh, the only pads that are not on both sides is right under here. You've got some pads if you need to get to them. They're there. I think you've got an LED, you've got a buzzer, and you've got a spare UART. There's not much under there. On top, you've got your USB to plug it in, and then you've got your DJI. That's right. 
you're going to plug in your air unit or your Caddx Vista directly into this plug right here and that's it. If something happens to that plug, I'd say you're, you're toast. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think there's any coming back from that. All right, I did just notice, looky here, we've got one, two, three, four. We've got four addressable LEDs. What does addressable mean? It means that you can fully program these LEDs just like any other Betaflight LED. I have a full video on how to set up and run LEDs. You can do super awesome things with them. You can program them to your throttle. You can program them to your arming. I mean, you can program them to your RSSI signal. I mean, you can really program LEDs. I have got to get inside of here. I mean, I don't want to do that because I want to put this on a quad and I want to run it. Also, I mean, there's no need to conformal code, right? I mean, you can get this uh, beat up a little bit. You can get this a little bit wet. I mean, it looks completely sealed to me. I, I don't see any components other than my connectors and where I'm going to solder my XT60. So, I, I mean, this is nice. I hate to do it, but I've got to do it. I need to get inside. I need to know what's on this board. I can't, I'm not going to just, I see two screws right here. They are some type of star bit. I'm going to hopefully have that bit. Hopefully they'll just unscrew and come off, but that's probably too good to be true. They are probably thermal epoxied on. That's what I would imagine. That's what you would do with any other heat sink on any other component, like maybe an ESC or something like that. I do have some here. So after we crack it open, no fear, no worries. I will put it back on. All right, let's find the bit. I've got a case of bits from my old uh, ES121 driver. Uh, I do have a video on that. If you want to check that out, I'll link that for you too. But let's see. Whew, look how small that is. And it's smaller than that. I think they have officially locked me out. Okay. Star bit, huh? You're going to hit me with the star bit. Unless these screws don't do anything. Oh. Okay, dokie. Okay, that was not the easiest thing to do, but I did get out both screws. I'm going to try to wiggle up in there. Okay. Don't want to break it. All right, so we're going to get ourselves a vise. We want to set these screws aside because we are going to put it back together. Okay, so there you go. We've got our spring-loaded mechanism. Now, I did notice, I do want to point out right here on the bottom, it's very hard to see, but up under there, there is labeling for these pads, so you're not just completely on your own. And just so you know, if you're watching the video and want to know how to wire it, take a quick look. You've got your ground, 5 volt, buzzer minus, buzzer plus, UART3TX, UART3RX, and then an LED pad right here on the final pad right there up under the bottom, okay? Just in case you didn't know and you wanted to know, now you do. All right, let's get up on here. Yes, I am going to heat it up. Did you see that? I had such a hard time getting that off that about halfway through, I was like, you know what? Screw this. Go out. Buy one right now because it's built so good. I can't even get the heat sink off. <laughs> Holy moly. All right, let's take a look. Whew. Okay, to my surprise. Did I take off a capacitor? I did. Ah, I heated up so much. Look at that. I took off a capacitor. Can you see that? I'll have to do a repair. No big deal. We'll go ahead. We'll pull that cap off. I'll put it back on. We'll put a little bit of solder paste. You know what I'm saying? But here's the deal. I, it was important that this came off for a couple reasons. One is so that I can show you. Look at here. And you may have a hard time seeing it. If we have to, we'll bust out the scope. But check this out. There's actually a hole through the entire 
uh, through the entire stack right here. There's an entire hole all the way through here. That means from the bottom heat sink by the ESC all the way up through the actual board and into the, hot, the top heat sink where there's more screw holes right here. Look at that, one and two. It is actually driven all the way through. Those screws on top of all this thermal epoxy is actually held on. So truly, truly impressive. I was not expecting that. I really thought the screws were just for looks. I had no idea. Holy cow, this is just built well. This is real aluminum. Did you see, I don't know if you saw, but I'm running f over 460 degrees. I had that heat gun on there nonstop. The board was just dissipating the heat. Holy cow, so look at that. Right here, it looks like, you know, and obviously I can't read it, but right here, it looks like we have our STM32 right there, and then surrounded by, we have all, our, all of our STM32 F0s, which is our ESC uh, microcontroller units that are surrounded. Look how thick that board is. That board is super thick, thicker than your average board. So here's a regular flight controller. Look at the difference. Wow. Very, very beefy. What I do want to say though is if you're not familiar with it, basically it's a glue or an epoxy that is actually thermally conductive, not electrically conductive, thermally. That means that the heat and or cool will generate through it. So when they squirt all that on there, not electrically conductive, not going to damage anything, but it's going to allow the heat to just flow right through the board, right into the heat sinks, both top and bottom and be able to be just blown off by the air while flying. I don't see, I mean, most ESCs, if they don't overheat, don't overheat, they'll continue to run. If you're not familiar with this, go ahead and check out my ESC torture chamber. I actually have that where I put ESCs in it, and I just, I mean... I, I can feel the wind under here. I can feel it on my knees. Oh my God. We beat them up. We have some fun. But usually once they get hot, that's when they shut down. And this guy here, I don't see it getting hot. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Now, we do need to go over a few things. The simple fact, and what I'll do is I'll put the capacitors back on and I'll close this back up. I'll reseal it with some new uh, thermal epoxy. I may clean this one up, get it off, and put on some fresh stuff. We'll see. But what I do want to go over real quick is this board is coming in at $130. That is a very hefty price tag. We are looking at a worldwide chip shortage and uh, things are going up. I get it. So I don't know if that value is based on that factor or if it's just based on how great this board is. But right now you can get yourself. Here we are with the Beast H7. This is an H7 microcontroller and uh, you know you can get it in an F7. So my point with this is, is although this is a whoop size board, it just means that it's a little bit smaller, but it's the same thing. 45 amps, F7 microprocessor, we are talking about $69. Yes, this is ESC, flight controller, PDB, everything all in one for 70 bucks versus 130. That's nearly double the price. You do the math. I haven't done the research. I haven't taken them both to the sky. I will tell you that I have my, my, my beast right here. This is the H7. This board is a little bit more, but it is a bigger uh, microprocessor. That H7 uh, beast is a 55 amp, not a 45, 55 amps. There is something very important to mention. This board is HD only. So if you're a analog racer or you're in multi-GP where guys don't fly digi, you are not going to be able to run this board. It does not do analog. This is only, only digital. Okay. This guy here has right here, Betaflight OSD right on board right there. Just saying, just pointing out the facts. All right, so from $70, okay, $69.99, all the way up to $129.99, the only difference I'm seeing is that the more expensive one is actually lacking the Betaflight OSD and a couple other small features. But this board is called the Infinity Board. I mean, their whole line is called the Infinity Board, but their 
uh, motto behind this board is this is a one-time buy. You buy it, you put it in, and it's going to just keep running and running and running. It's, I'm going to put it back together. I'm going to strap it to a quad. Let me know if you want to build video on it. I mean, it'll be a simple one, but we can build it. We can fly it. We can test it. Let me know. Maybe we'll throw it in the ESC chamber, huh? The ESC torture chamber. Let me know. We'll check this guy out. We'll see how it does. I hope that you guys go out and get you one and try this thing. If you want to check out the Beast H7, I'll put a link for you down in the video description. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you on the next one. Oh.